Why don't you tell us, first of all, what's going on? Because when I saw the Mt. Gox issues, I thought, oh, they just have uh, people writing software that don't know what they're doing. But now I see kind of the similar issue at Bitstamp. Yeah. Um, so this, this bug, so to speak, is um, it's more of an implementation issue. A lot of the, the businesses that operate with Bitcoin, they have built customized software. And sometimes that customized software doesn't um, flesh out the whole spec of, of the Bitcoin protocol and, and the, the uh, reference implementation. So this is something that has uh, existed since, I think, 2011, this issue that we're talking about. And it's just that it's now coming to a head. Uh, but they've been working on it for a while. They're, they're working on, on changes that will address it. Um, it's, it's more of a hiccup than it is a real bug. But it's because these sites have had to go down to, to fix their service. Is it, does it concern you, though, as far as the future of Bitcoin? Is it a problem that we should be worrying about? I don't think so. I mean, we've seen stuff like this before, and usually it gets fixed in a day or two. I mean, there's, there's a ton of people that, that will just jump on it and, and fix it. And um, so it's a really, like, it's a community thing. It's really, it's a cool moment. I want to bring Sally in. Do you feel like people in the broader markets care about Bitcoin, or is it for this tiny universe of Bitcoin enthusiasts, dare I say it, geeks? <laughs> Us? <laughs> Nothing wrong with geeks. My impression is people are very interested in it, don't particularly think they understand it yet, and are wondering if this is the next big thing. Well, I'm interested, what are you hearing from regulators? Um, there, there's a lot of uh, learning curve with mm -hmm. Bitcoin. So, you know, we've been, been down to D.C. And, and at the New York State hearings, and um, since 2012, it's gotten a lot better. There's mm -hmm. a lot better understanding of Bitcoin, the regulatory issues that go along with operating a money service business. And, and businesses are becoming educated as well as the community as far as, you know, this is not a traditional tech uh, company. This is tech finance. And there's, there's greater implications there as far as regulation and, and legality. Is it a coincidence that the command economies, the communist countries, are outlawing Bitcoin right away? Because it seems that governments uh, who need to control things like this freak out when they can't. I think there's a lot of posturing between different nations right now geopolitically as far as their political leanings towards Bitcoin. I think there's a lot of public statements that are being said where under the table they're still very pro-Bitcoin. So it's, for, as, a political, as a political bargaining chip, it's, it's still uh, very early stages. Sally, in your experience, is it fair to say that regulators just try to shy away or be defensive about things they don't understand? If you take it back to derivatives products and now let's compare it to Bitcoin, is it that they definitely find fundamental issues or they want to shoot down anything they don't Well, I, I would probably phrase it differently and, and not to be kind to regulators, but they do have mandates that they're trying to execute on, investor protection, for example, and so they try to understand these things. And as with everyone, whether they work in industry, whether they're regulators, is you immediately try to put it in the box that already exists. How do I think about that? Um, and, you know, it, there are a lot of them, as you're probably learning. There are a lot of regulators. And so understanding what that process is to get them to, to get to where they need to be in terms of their knowledge and then put in place sensible regulation, you know, I'm sure you're learning a lot and spending, you know, your peers are spending a lot of time on it. Yeah, we're, we're trying to walk that thin line yeah. between appealing to uh, the tech community, which, which tends to be sort of anti-regulation because we're innovators, and, and the regulators to say, well, you know, consumer protection is an important thing. And so we're trying to navigate those waters and, and just bring everybody to the table so yeah. there's collaboration. Welcome to my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just to be, uh, just so people know, you work with a company called Coin Validate, which is originally was kind of vilified in the Bitcoin community because people thought you wanted to put names on wallets for everyone. But really, it's to try and like, if I go to a bank, I have to give them my social or I can't open an account, right? Yeah, it's, it's similarly attaching a checking and routing number to, to your financial transactions. Um, it's not removing the option of having anonymous cash transactions. So I think people got a little stuck on that. Uh, Coin validation is a product we did. And we have an incubator here in New York. We just try to build things that solve. Coin Apex. Yeah, Coin incubator. Apex. And we try to build things that it's solve so current issues. It's depressing when people are so smart and awesome and, and so, so young. much younger than me. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> like, like, it just breaks me. Well, Alex, congratulations. Thank you so Seriously. much. Thank you. Yeah. Good yeah. Thanks you. for coming in. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Alex <laughs> Waters, uh, they are Bitcoin dev, as they call them, Bitcoin developer and uh, uh, co-founder of Coin Apex.